Hello, seems good magic people. We're back. I drafted this deck last night, and then here I am, having my morning cup of coffee, and thinking, did you pick the right cards? Did you put the right cards in the deck? I think we did. I just want to look over it a moment to kind of re-familiarize myself with what we're doing. I got a Master Trinketer in this? That's fantastic. Am I aggressive enough to actually capitalize on this Osprey? Maybe. Let's give this a go. I, I think I like it. I think I understand why I have one in the sideboard. We're potentially bringing this guy in. We've got a lot of playables over here. I've ended up with some decks where I kind of bounced back and forth between colors so much that I really didn't have much of a sideboard. Um, but here, I do. And we're pretty happy about that. All right, here we go. I would like to play first. Where's my chat? I like having chat visible. I like to be able to see it and kind of know what's up. How do I feel about this hand? Not real good. But I usually keep five lands and spells. Like, we'll probably be able to get some value out of the rebuke. I've got an assassinate. Uh, we kind of need to draw a flyer. Like, flyer, ground creature. The, the challenge of keeping a hand like this is we have a bunch of two drops in the deck and they get worse the, the, the longer the game goes on, right? So like, if I don't have a 3-1 here, I'm probably not, like, <laughs> and I draw one on turn five, it's not going to be nearly as effective or useful as it would have been right now. See, there's theirs, for example. And that takes us off curve because uh, we can't really metallic rebuke this turn I could play the trinketeer with the idea that um, we could make servos and block but we kind of can't so I think what I need to do here is is try to get this rebuke off ice over that then land the trinketeer or something else if they don't cast anything this turn I guess they got me But that, we're pretty happy to, to counter. Now, if I draw a creature that can blank that, I'm likely to play that instead. Uh, but this is kind of the opportune time to ice over something. The challenge is whatever they play next, I may not be able to handle. But I, I guess we're probably in just make some servo tokens at that point. But this technically gets us stable, right? Then we can find some other way to do a thing. Sure. Oh, you don't have anything. That's fantastic. It's so good. I really like that you don't have a thing. So the question is, would I rather play this this turn so that I can potentially attack for three, or am I going to save it until we have activation up? That would be two more turns. I don't think that's what I want to do. It is more likely to win the game if it is un unhindered. Unhindered? Is that a word? Un un if they don't mess with it, it wins games. So I could play it and then just start making servos and, and see if they can deal with it. Like, I untap, make a servo. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play the biggest thing. It's Santa Claus. He's making toys for you. He's not really making toys for you. Well, he's making toys, but you can't have them. Get away from my toys. Considering I'm on stone nothing, it's like, what are we supposed to be afraid of here? Impeccable timing? Maybe. Maybe. Am I okay trading this for an impeccable timing and getting one servo out of the deal? I'm kind of not. I'm kind of not. There's also that new white spell that deals damage um, and shenanigans. I, I'm, I'm just going to pass. You're not getting me with an impeccable timing. Maybe I'm being too safe here. 
but we know they're playing white. They will probably eventually get something that can interact with this, right? And I, I'd, I'd like to keep it around because I just don't have anything else going. Sure. Get that servo army going. Now, do I call it in the bright stat and swing? Yeah, I think I do. I think I absolutely do. I'm interested in... Well, that's only five damage. Like, let's say they hit me for three. I'm kind of okay with that. They hit me for three, they play another creature, or they sack the implement and then put it on it. Then it's even better to catch it in the brights. And I can play the automaton and still make a servo this turn. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Because it's five damage this turn, uh, but it'll be nine next turn. And I think this interests me. Yeah, and if they're cycling that, like, let's go ahead and let them put the counter on there, draw their card, do their thing. I think that makes us pretty happy. Sure. Like, I'm not happy about that because it's one of the better cards in the set, but it's what we got. Well, I guess this is our world now. Does it have to be? Is that better than just, what, six, seven, eight making two dudes? Can't really get in for damage. But I kind of don't need to. So let's. They could swing for nine, right? Like, that could happen. You know. I don't think they have much else going on here. Oh, okay. Well, then. I suspected they would crew in response. Since they didn't, let's bring them beats. You don't actually have to be good at magic when you have something like Master Trinketeer. Which is really neat. It makes me happy. Um, so now, if I swing in and they impeccable timing this, they take five. If they don't, they take five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's lethal. All right. We may as well put lethal on there, on the stack. I suspect they have it. I'm kind of okay with it uh, because they're still taking the five. We've got an overwhelming ground force and this guy's triggered. Oh, okay. Death dismissal for one and one. So this leaves them taking four damage. So the question is, would I rather make a bunch of servos in response that can attack next turn or would I rather play these guys? Because them taking four Still technically puts them to lethal. That's that's the other one I was talking about, the four mana Gideon's Reproach thing. Which we played around earlier and didn't play around this time. That that makes me a terrible, terrible player. Um, I guess I've still got access to scrying, right? If I just let this happen so we can play the aeronauts and scry. That seems fine. It doesn't finish the game right off, but it gets us pretty close. Of note, Caught in the Brights doesn't stop something from crewing a vehicle. Uh, so we're not actually able to really interact with any creature they play to, to block with the Express, for example. Oh, I was going to scry. And we would have kept it, I think. I think that would have been good. Okay, so again, don't have to be a good player. Just have to have Master Trinketeer and uh, you get to win. 
Some people are going to think that that keep was risky. It, it was. Every keep in Magic is risky. You're not just looking at the seven cards you have. You're looking at the also the top three cards of your deck, the top five cards of your deck. All of those matter. As I said, keeping something like that makes any of these cards that we draw a little bit worse because we're wanting to play them early and attack with them, right? Um, but we didn't draw any of those. We instead drew the good stuff that we can do with lots of mana. So that worked out quite well. Quite well. I'm a little interested in Dispersal Technician if they're going to be playing in uh, the, the, the Dino Train. Because the Dino Train's a little bit terrifying anyway. And if it gets going, we can kind of stop it there. Select is sort of a way to think about that too. A little less interested in the Rebuke on the draw. So I, th I think I'm going to make that swap. And then we will think about where we would like to go next. Acrobatic Maneuver is kind of cute with this guy. It's now kind of cute with this guy. It's now kind of cute with the Trophy Mage. Is it getting kind of cute enough that I could just play it? It might just be. Iced Over was fine. Yeah, I think I'm okay with this. We've got enough stuff going on here. I think we're fine. Just have to be careful. Again, Caught in the Brights, Vehicle Interaction. It, it's, it is not Take Your Driver's License. This actually looks pretty good. We will keep it. Implement of ferocity, you say? Yes. So ferocious. This guy is so audacious. Look at him. Do you see how audacious he is? Hi, Tim. I think I'm okay leading the Scrap Trawler here. If they don't attack, it's a little bit of a signal that they've got the thing that does the stuff. Or, excuse me, if they don't tap out. Uh, but we don't have to let ourselves get two for one. We can just attack for three. Yeah, sure. That's going to fit our curve so nicely. And they may decide they don't want to trade this. That'd be great. So we can play the Trophy Mage, get a 3-drop, then next turn play the 3-drop in the Infiltrator. And we've got two different 3s to select from, if I recall correctly. We've got the Vehicle and the Automaton. The Automaton starts to look interesting at this point um, because after we've played the Automaton and this, we're, we're not really doing anything else. The Garrison needs a crew too, so it's basically turning the, it's, it's giving us like one more point of power with the Trophy Mage. So I think I actually like the Automaton here is, is it gives me something to do with mana that I just don't have. If we draw more stuff, that's great. If we don't, uh, well, we can spend our mana to scry and eventually get two more stuff. And again, this was mostly a 3-2 in this deck anyway. I could see decks where it's a little easier to abuse, but this just isn't one of them. Also, I guess we took a card out of the deck that wasn't the Master Trinketeer. Man, that guy's terrifying. So we're thinning the deck of non-Trinketeer cards. This guy's so wily. So wily. That, I suppose, is the downside of having the Automaton over the Mr. Garrison, um, is that the Trophy Mage can't attack into a 3-3, but um, Mr. Audacious here sure can. And we've got plenty more Audacious cards where that came from. Roar! I really don't want to ice over 
a Bandar, so we're pretty happy to make this trade. Oh, you were not happy to make that trade. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Look at you. Yeah, you're like, I'll move these counters over. And then I'll trade it. I see what you did there. Again, our plan of getting 10 damage on the ground and then drop an air force seems to be doing all right. And as soon as they get you know, greedy and attack us with this here fella. I think we're all right. What? That makes zero sense. Sure. This is just dying to eat a combat trick. I guess that makes sense if they want to trigger revolt, Travis. You've got to remember that revolt is a mechanic in this set. Yeah, that's that's we talked about on that on the podcast last night. Don't block. They have things. I'm still going to send with this. Um, there's a, a significant chance they have some sort of blink effect. And I, I think I'm happier with that not being on the board. That was a stupid block. I'm at 20. See? There you go. You got me. You killed the card that mattered. It's a shame that we're going to kill you with this big flying whale. Because apparently whales fly. Now remember, no more blocks, Travis. No more blocks. Like, does that really feel like a blowout that the dead are harpooner worked? Because essentially what happened is they traded a scouting bandar for an audacious infiltrator. When the previous when I was going to attack into that 100 percent of the time. Now, it was neat with the acrobatic maneuver, but the more I think about it, that may have been a reasonable block. If I could see their hand and see that they were going to dead harpoon me with this board state, I'd probably still block it. Because, like, the Bandar could have just trickled revolt, revolt on its own. Like, if I don't block it and they really want to dead eye harpoon me, they can just move all the counters off of it. But yeah, it, it does lead to a central tenet of Aether Revolt drafting for me so far, which is never block what your, when your opponent attacks. That way you can race. So it seems like a race format. Lots of turning to the left going on. Anyway, we'll see you for round two here in just a second. 